Greetings, Africa Engineering News family, and welcome back to another weekly updates by yours truly, Winnie O, where we discuss all things engineering, innovation, you know, tech updates all around, you know, STEM updates happening across the African continent. And also, we got you covered on those funding mechanisms. So, yeah, so be sure to check us out at www.africaengineeringnews.com. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, this week, we're going to highlight two feature articles. The first is the EcoBank FinTech Challenge of 2020 has officially announced its top 10 finalists, inclusive of the top three cash prize winners of the 10,000, 7,000, and 5,000 US dollar recipients. And so those are No Query, Ucheshe, and Growth Factor. Also, note that the top 10 finalists all got inducted into the EcoBank FinTech. Um, year-long fellowship program to help them you know continue to grow in their entrepreneurial and startup um, journey so I support that why not sounds like a great plan right <laughs> so yeah so for more details on that feel free to check out the article on the website that's EcoBank Group announces 2020 winners of FinTech Challenge Next, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I know it's going to be a touchy topic, it really is. It's titled, Four Things African Governments Need to Get Right When Negotiating Infrastructure Deals with China. Told you it was going to be touchy. Now, you know, as, as many of you know, um, China has been funding a significant amount of projects. Um, over the last decade or so, and I'm sure, you know, some negotiations are ongoing with regards to the repayment plans and some governments are asking for leniency or forgiveness, debt, the debt forgiveness. And so that's neither here nor there. But overall, um, a big concern has been the way negotiation deals have been going down and, you know, the penalties and really, you know, African uh, people, the, the constituents, right, of these various nations have been overall unhappy with the terms of these deals that they're not involved in, right? But they are counted as part of collateral damage, really, let's say. Anywho, um, so it was interesting that for this feature article, the first thing, you know, the, the, the first line is, you don't negotiate with China. And that says a lot. That says a lot um, because when it comes to negotiation, ideally both parties are supposed to come with what they desire and get to a happy medium and, you know, and hopefully, you know, end up with a mutually beneficial deal where it seems like, especially for African nations, we've been getting the raw end of the deal. <laughs> and and perhaps it's, it's a good time to reevaluate and really bring back this conversation to the forefront as we move forward uh, post COVID, you know, and in evaluating, well, what what does the future of Africa's infrastructure look like? And what what does the funding mechanism look like? And, you know, what kind of deals do we want? And how do we want to approach the art of, you know, negotiations, let's say. And so um, in this article, uh, it points out four things that our African governments should be mindful of when negotiating future deals. And the first is everyone should be involved. And by everyone, everyone I mean everyone essential to the job, especially those who are best suited and those who are most affected. We want the best people for our best deals, period, right? And that makes sense to me. Um, number two, we need to empower the negotiators. It doesn't make sense for, you know, those at the very top to be circumventing um, the very real concerns that perhaps, you know, those who are boots on the ground, as they say here in the US, it's, it's, it's not fair to circumvent their opinions and their input because they're the ones who will actually be doing the day-to-day -day and the long-term maintenance of these projects. So it's important to make sure that we get all the stakeholders um, involved in these processes. Next, it's important to keep the public on your side, right? Like, and, and like, to me, it seems pretty self-explanatory. Like, if you are, if your job is to serve the public, don't you think it is for your best interest and for everybody's best interest to make decisions that are not only good for the public, but 
that, that are going to be supported by the public and as, as your resident Kenyan here in the house I mean that's one uh, that has been one of my biggest pet peeves with some of the deals as I talk to my fellow Kenyans it's there's there's been some um, uh, displeased uh, Kenyan folk um, in the community who are not happy with the way these terms of agreements and it's important to have to listen to your constituents you know like to me it's like it makes sense it's it's very direct I mean they're the ones who you ideally answer to when all is said and done they are the ones who are to hold you accountable so if you're not being accountable if you're not being responsible on their behalf what does that say about your objective as a leader and the fourth thing is important to make sure that you know especially as african you know nations that we are sharing the lessons learned right because it's been over 10 years of negotiations with the chinese government or chinese um, funding um, mechanisms and it's important to make sure that um, we as Africa, we as African nations get smarter in the way we negotiate. Um, and I would also, you know, probably propose that we probably need to do more negotiations as a conglomerate than individual nations. Because also if you look at the sheer um, comparison in size and power, let's say it's, it's, it's not comparing apples to apples if we're negotiating as individual nations and i'm sure there's complexities with that obviously but i just want to you know let's ideas out there with their own ideas right so yeah and i think we also have to get to a point where we're willing to walk away from a bad deal you know africa africa's nations need to be willing to walk away from deals that are not um in the, in the long term best for their people period so with that also i will put a plug for the upcoming events um there is uh the afro barometer voices africa webinar on china africa engagement that's on september 3rd i believe that's thursday thursday september 3rd be sure to check that out it's free it's free to register so why not? If, if, if you're interested in this topic and, you know, just in the Africa Rising movement and Africa-China relations, this is a really good webinar to check out. Um, also, for upcoming events, there's the e-food and hospitality um, Africa Summit. That's on September 1st. That's right around the corner. Um, the AI Expo Africa Conference. That's September 3rd as well. Secure Waters um, Africa Digi Conference, that's September 9th. For your venture capital for Africa applications, those are due September 11th. And so for you know for topics such as this and you know future articles or updates or events coming up, be sure to stay connected with us on the social media platforms at Africa Engineering News. And so until next time, be well, be safe, take care of yourselves, and in all you do, be encouraged. All right. Ciao, guys.